Chemsters, this is Mrs. Vandewally bringing you the Chemster video series. How's that? Um, this is an idea behind a flipped classroom, and a flipped classroom is where you do notes at home, and then we practice problems in class, so if you need any help, I'm there to help you. And uh, a few ground rules while we, we talk about the flipped classroom is you're expected to actually, you know, pay attention and focus on what we're doing in the notes right now. So put your phones away, put any other distractions away, turn off the TV if that's what you're doing, and just watch the video uh, for this, this time. Uh, focus on what I'm doing, try to figure out what I'm talking about. When I say, you know, pause this and, you know, finish the problem, you need to do that, and that will help you a lot. Um, then in class, if you have any questions, we can certainly go over those. If you jot down uh, something maybe in the margin or get a little post note or, or even text me if you want, and I, I can help you if you have any questions during the flip classroom time. Um, so let's begin. We are in chapter eight. We're talking about chemical reactions and we have just completed the section where we predicted the type of reactions. So there were your synthesis, combustion, uh, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement. Those are the ones that we have talked about. And that background will certainly help us with this where we actually predict the products where I give you the reactants, you tell me the products. So if you go back and look at our notes from the previous section, you're going to see a lot of the similarities come back up again but instead of me giving you the product you determine it so what I would suggest uh, for all these problems is to make sure you know what type of reaction it is and that will help you predict the products so we said synthesis this is where two reactants become one and the most common case of synthesis is where you have an element and an element and you'll get a binary compound at that point so for example I have copper and sulfur wasn't this one that you did in your lab where you rub the sulfur on the copper and you made this black stuff all right yeah that's that's gonna be a synthesis reaction and um, so what happens here we end up with an ionic compound so you have to know the charges uh, you're gonna say uh, mrs. Vandewelli this is a transition metal how do I know the the charge of this if that comes up your best bet is to make it a plus two that is the most common charge of your transition metals um, there's a few exceptions um, one I'm thinking of right now would be gold and bismuth gold can only be one and three and bismuth can only be three and five but other than that almost every transition will have a plus two as an option so be safe and pick that if you will and besides it makes it really easy predicting the the um, uh, formula for the copper to sulfide for example um, we do still have to remember when we make ionic compounds what's the charges so if copper is me a plus two um, hang on a second a plus two and sulfur is a minus two well hey look at those charges cancel out and what are you left with is just CUS so now we've predicted the product what's always the last thing to do then is to balance and I'll get rid of these guys we need to balance this and it's the same rules that we had before um, one copper on each side one sulfur on each side and lo and behold this is already balanced okay let's look at the next one. Oh my look at I have given you uh, the names you have to come up with everything else so we need to first come up with the formulas then we have to come up with the products then we have to balance this all right well this one isn't too hard um, beryllium I sure hope you know is uh, BE and oxygen what do you remember about oxygen in this section particularly we're not just talking about oh but we're talking about the Hofbrinkle which means it's a diatomic O2 and so we have an element and an element we're going to make up with the binary um, product here so um, beryllium's a metal is going to be an ionic compound so look on your periodic table that's a good thing to have right now especially doing this section is, is uh, maybe pause this and pull out a periodic table so you can do it. Alright, hopefully you found one. You should have lots of periodic tables at this point. So what is the charge of beryllium? Find it. 
did you find it's a plus two? All right, and, and probably oxygen at this point, you probably already remember it's minus two. We do oxygen a lot. And once again, what do you notice about the charges? Boy, I made it easy on you. Uh, the charges canceled out, so that is our formula for uh, beryllium oxide. Uh, now what do you have to do? You have to balance it. So why don't you pause this and go ahead and balance it. All right, well, how did we do? One beryllium, one beryllium, two oxygens, one oxygen, so I need to put a two here, but now what? Ruh -ruh, my beryllium's are off, so I need to put a two here. And now we're balanced, okay? Well, let's look at the next section. Um, when you're talking about synthesis, and you're coming across things that are not an element and an element like the the two examples above this is when maybe you're like well what kind of reaction will this be go through your your all five types and if it doesn't fit in maybe the traditional definitions of you know the the synthesis well can this be um decomposition no i have two reactants can this be single replacement no, I don't have an element in an ionic, all right? I have magnesium oxide as an ionic, but water is certainly not an element. Is it double replacement? Well, um, maybe, maybe not. The water, we said, can act like ionic. Think of hydrogen hydroxide. So maybe it's double replacement and certainly not a combustion. But what happens here, if we have a metal oxide and water, it's most definitely going to be um, a, a synthesis. And what we're going to make is a hydroxide, a metal hydroxide. So while you're at it, what is the charge of a hydroxide? You have to memorize it. The charge is going to be a negative one. And that's going to help you then with your product. So when I make a metal hydroxide, well, what's the charge of magnesium the whole time? The magnesium in this case is going to be a plus two for magnesium. And when you look at your charges and you have to crisscross, what is going to be the formula for magnesium hydroxide? Go ahead and figure that out. All right, how did you do? Did you get that as your formula for magnesium hydroxide? And now it's a matter of balancing. So I have one magnesium on both sides. I have two oxygens on both sides and two hydrogens on both sides. Um, it is already balanced, so you don't have to do anything. So what about lithium oxide? Uh-oh, I gave you the, the name. You have to come up with a formula. It is ionic. You must know their charges, correct? So what is the charge of lithium? Hopefully you got plus one. Oxide is minus two. So what's the formula for lithium oxide? Hopefully you got Li2O and then of course plus water and what are you going to make you have a metal oxide and you have water you're going to make a metal hydroxide so what's the charge of lithium again it was plus one what's the charge of hydroxide all the time it is negative one so what's the formula for lithium hydroxide did you get this? I hope you did. And what's left to do now? It is balancing. So if you look at this, um, I would save oxygens to the last because it shows up three times. So now let's start with lithium. I have two lithiums on the reactant side. I have only one on the product side. So I'll put a two here. And that should take care of it because now I have two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here one two oxygens here and two oxygens there it works so the other one we have is now a non-metal oxide and water so if you come across this again do your mental checklist uh, is it synthesis well it doesn't look binary to me let's keep going is it decomposition no way i have two reactants is it single replacement no i don't have an element in an ionic compound is it double replacement i definitely don't have two ionic compounds um carbon dioxide will never be ionic uh, we just spent the whole chapter looking at that and saying oh it's covalent and let's draw the Lewis structures and all that. 
Um, is it uh, combustion? No, it's not. But Mrs. Vanderwell, I, I see carbon dioxide and water, but in your combustions, those are your products, not your reactants. So it can only be synthesis. And honestly, these are the easiest ones to do because you kind of push everything together. You end up getting an acid. And how do you write your acids? You put the H first and your O's last and whatever element in the middle. So uh, let's see here. Here's my H's. Here are my O's. And my um, uh, element in the middle is carbon. So it ends up being H2, because I have two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, uh, three oxygens at the end, and one carbon in the middle. And you should recognize this as a carbonate, so it becomes carbonic acid. Okay, so what would I do with this next one? Well, first I have to write down the formulas correctly, don't I? Let me scroll this down. All right, so hopefully uh, your, your SO2 works out. I'm not being able to move it very well. Your SO2 is sulfur dioxide, and now you have water, H2O. Hopefully you knew that. And again, it, the only thing it can be is synthesis. So um, we will put the H's first to make your acid. Your O's last. You end up with three of them. And then put your S in the middle, and you might recognize this as sulfurous acid. So let's talk about decomposition. Uh, so again, if we have our binary compounds, um, that means it only consists of two uh, different elements. So if you have a binary compound, the only thing you can really break it down into is its elements. So in the case of sodium chloride, if we put electricity through it, um, we're going to break it down to sodium and chlorine. Oops. And so that's what I will get here. So I have sodium and chlorine. Okay. Hang on. So folks, um, I tell you what, I'm going to stop my, my um, chemistry video right now. I'm having some technical difficulties, so I will try to fix my technical difficulties and come back to decomposition. So um, look for our next video. It'll be posted, okay? So see you later.